But first we want to talk a little bit about uh, Fermilab and Argonne. You have a special interest in what's happening there and the federal government's role in that. Tell us. Well, I do. I, I do represent Fermilab, uh, so I have a natural interest there. But also, uh, I've got four kids. The youngest of uh, my kids uh, wants to be a scientist someday, and I'm very concerned about the direction of science in America. I feel like we're losing that focus of basic scientific research. Well, the numbers seem to bear that out. It does. It does. I mean, we're, what we've seen, I've got a constituent physicist who I think had a great statement. He said there's two different types of science. There's Newtonian science and there's Edisonian science. Newtonian is really how things work. Edisonian is applying it to something practical for us to use. Use. Like the we light need both. Bulb. Yeah, like the light bulb. But Newtonian uh, is really being lost. We're seeing so much focus out of the administration right now towards Edisonian science. The market already does well with that. We don't have to do that as a federal government. The problem is they, they don't do basic scientific research, and that's what's made our nation great well, as being a, a nation. Of, the crisis at Fermilab, of course, comes because they've shut the Tevatron yes. down. It's been superseded now by the technology in, in Switzerland, yes. in Geneva, right on the French border there. The Europeans are doing the big, the big science there, that, that sort of basic science. Right. What's the future? Is is because Republicans and Democrats have proposed recently big budget cuts at Fermi, and you've had to fight those. We have. You know, it's uh, we still have uh, an important role for basic scientific research. Fermi has been very involved in what's going on over in Switzerland. Uh, they've been key advisors. They still have 24 hours a day people at Fermi Lab helping with the research going on over in Switzerland. It's actually a control it's room. Exactly. And uh, with a lot of the troubles they had in getting that up and going, Fermi scientists were incredibly helpful in them working through that to get it up and going. We knew this day was coming when the Tevatron would be closing, but the next step is really what do we do uh, for basic basic scientific research to attract the best and brightest of the world back to America for scientific research. One of the things I'm uh, very supportive of is, is neutrino research and something that we're looking at. We can already use a lot of the equipment that we have and scientists that we have working with South Dakota, deep tunnel mine up in South Dakota, shooting these neutrinos, the smallest of all particles, through the Earth's crust, receiver up in South Dakota to be able to receive this. And we feel like there's some great promise here. Some of it is uh, with neutrinos conceivably being used uh, to take Take away the danger of uh, nuclear waste or even nuclear weapons to make you, them inert. It can be very powerful. But the counter argument, as you know, and I'm sure you hear it among your colleagues in Congress, is with the country billions, if not trillions of dollars in debt. Yes, this research is important, but why not do it a little further down the road when we have the economic footing? The problem is, once you get out, once you lose your place, and there's other countries, China and other places, that are more than willing to step in, Russia, other things, we've seen it, that when we step out and say, hey, we're just going to take a break, you don't get back in again. You lose that footing, you lose that, and you lose a generation. I think Let that's the biggest problem, is you've got young people. We're looking at that signature building near Batavia there, right up on the screen right now. Um, in five years or ten years, what's going to be going on there? Well, my hope is that we're going to continue to be doing very important uh, ground-shattering uh basic scientific research there, tied to the neutrino, uh, being at the cutting edge around the world. Nobody else is in the position we're in to be able to do this research. The money is there. We've shut down the Tevatron. Fermi and their director and all the leaders there have been very cooperative. So there's savings going on because the Tevatron has been shut, looking to the work over in Switzerland. Let's use that money now for the next step of basic scientific research. Rather than what we see the administration doing, is pulling this money away. They're not cutting the money. They're using it in pet projects, like Solyndra, like other type of programs more the applied science, where I just think the federal government shouldn't be in the applied science. Obviously, you never want to see jobs disappear. It's, right. a, it's a local economy issue for you as well. But what is it about these jobs in particular and this funding in particular that means they're more important than just regular jobs? Well, I think it really is. Are we going to be a nation that innovates? Uh, it gets back to that. Is And I think it's a core concept of what makes America great is we are an innovative nation. And to do that, you've got to have uh, basic scientific research. You've got to be inspiring our young, pe young people. We talk about STEM uh, education, uh, getting people involved in science and uh, technology and engineering. We've got to have places like Fermilab uh, to be able to inspire them, to see that we are committed to this as a nation. For example, Fermilab uh, meets with and uh, impacts 39,000 kids K through 12 every single year. 39,000 of our kids impacted by what's going on at Fermilab. If we lose that, it is a huge impact on our science education and on our future.